Okay, everybody. So we're back for another episode of the ACP Automation Adventure podcast. Today, we have the DeKalb County Juvenile Court System, the Probation Division. We have Nishanda Dean, who's the Chief Probation Officer. And then we have Johans Benton, who's the Principal Probation Officer. How are you all doing today? Great, great. Doing great. That's so good. You guys look great during this uh, quarantine season. <laughs> Well, if you all don't mind, I'd love for you all to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your positions and your responsibilities. My name is Shonda Dean. I am the Chief Probation Officer of the Cab Juvenile Court. Um, I am actually responsible for three, three units, which include school-based probation officers, court-based probation officers, specialized units, um, so basically, we supervise youth that have been uh, adjudicated and placed on probation for anywhere from six months to two years. It just depends on the charges. Um, and Mr. Benton here is, like I said, my principal, one of my principals. So he works very closely with me as we uh, try to rehabilitate these children. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Johans, do you have anything uh, to introduce? I know she gave a nice overview also of what you do, but if you want to add, that's fine as well. Um, Johans Benton, DeKalb Juvenile Court, uh, Principal Probation Officer. Um, I am a part of the school-based unit, but also, so I have a caseload. Um, my caseload is, is somewhat specialized because I have um, juveniles who are um, in a special school, they have mental illness. Um, also, I am um, placed over the counseling department with, uh, within the, um, the probation department. So I oversee to make sure that we receive or the counseling departments that are contracted through uh, the juvenile court receive the referrals and anything that they need. And also I do anything that Dean, L Dean uh, Chief Dean has me to do. <laughs> and this is interesting because I want to know how about how many students would you all sort of oversee at a time or how many people how many students would be in each of these individualized units? Um, the how many kids you said mm -hmm. how, how many, many kids about how uh, many kids? overall probably about um maybe 400. On average, a lot of children that you all will work with at a time or um, what would sort of be like a good amount of students that you all would be able to assist? Average, um, over the past, I guess you say past couple of years, we would say probably about 800 total average. Um, like, and you know, it has gone down, like I say, since COVID. But you're looking at overall caseload, we try to keep them within probably 25 to 30 cases each, which is pretty manageable. Anything higher than that, it gets a little tricky. Um, so it's based on staffing. Um, they are assigned based on the schools. So we try to balance it out as much as we can so that the numbers kind of balance so that, you know, one PO is not supervising 50 and one has 20. Absolutely. And the PO, that's probation officers. Okay, wonderful. I'm telling you, I'm about to get all the terminology together today. <laughs> so this is great. This is great. Tell us a little bit about the vision and the mission of uh, DeKalb County Juvenile Court System. The, the mission of the court is, is to protect the best interests of the child and the community, to restore the lives of children, uh, who have been neglected or abused um, to redirect children who have admitted to or have been found in violation of the law to become law-abiding productive citizens and to support the continuity of families by leaving the children in their homes you know whenever we can um, the objective is always to try to leave them in their homes and work with them i was going to say i think the thing that stood out to me most about this vision is the restoration par portion of it. That's so key in helping these, uh, the youth 
and getting back to a pathway that's really beneficial for them and their futures, as well as the community. Um, so what services, what would you all do specifically in assisting these youth and what services you all provide or um, how you all work with the community to do to complete this mission? Um, <laughs> we have uh, the probation department actually has um, a lot of services that we do offer our families and those are probated youth as well as non probated youth. Um, so the youth that has come through the court system and then the youth that just are in the community that families need help. Um, so we have counseling, of course, we offer counseling. We have several different classes for anything from drug classes um, to decision making classes. We have um, uh, ooh, um, shoplifting classes. We have classes that, that cover an array of uh, uh, a lot of um, things that, that families within the communities have issues with or that children may need redirection from. Um, so we have those classes. We have programs um, for, we have one special program within the um, uh, probation department, which is Rebound, which is a, a drug court pro program. So those juveniles who are having issues with um, substance abuse, we uh, place them in this program so they can receive um, and kind of like intensive um, supervision, but it's a communi community effort. So it's not just them being placed on probation and receiving counseling. It's them being placed on pro probation, receiving counseling, receiving other uh, different type of classes and, and community-based organizations that work with the court that try to help the child make better decisions and try to help the child uh, wean off of those uh, substances that they may um, have issues with. Um, we have CHINS classes. We have classes for parents. So not just to redirect the child, but also to re redirect the parents' thinking. So we have, um, we, we offer all of those classes, which um, like I say, help the community, but, um, but also help the child that's, um, that's on probation or in, in some cases that are not on probation. Absolutely, because the key there is to truly help a child is to also help the child's environment. Um, so that's awesome that you all have those all-inclusive uh, services and resources for, as you said, the community, the parents, and the child. Um, I'm wondering with the community, uh, what organizations or other companies within the community do you all partner with? Um, several different churches. Um, we have, um, ooh, to name them, it would be difficult, but we have uh, several different organizations, anywhere from the uh, fraternal and fraternity and sorority organizations to churches to just um, community organizations in general. Um, anywhere from like um, in the past, we've had food banks to just um, of course, counseling organizations. Um, and it, it's just kind of like any organization that's, that, that presents itself to the court that wants to assist with any type of problems or issues that we may face as probation officers or as um, public servants to help the families um, that we come across. So it could be anywhere from a parenting class that's not directly associated with the court, but see that there's a need. Um, so we, and we get contacted all of the time from organizations that want to help. I mean, we have it, we've had everything from a chess club to um, to even colleges reaching out um, um, with literacy programs and things of that nature. So it varies from time to time. And of course, since we're in the COVID era, era um, we haven't. It's not. It's not as big as it normally is, but it can be pretty extensive. And a lot of times during the summer. We have different organizations that come in that teach classes, anything from sex education to um, 
to just how to deal with everyday life situations. So we've partnered, we even with um, the DeKalb County Jail who's taught classes. So it's, it's, it, it varies, but it's a lot of organizations. I think you just, kind of just kind of to piggyback off of Ken's off of Johannes, just kind of outside the box a little bit, because when we're talking about kids, they want, we want them also exposed to something that they're not used to, even when Mr. Benton, he's talking about the chess, we talk about mindfulness which is the yoga. yoga, you know, a lot yes. of these times these kids like they didn't want to do any yoga, but once those they get involved and come, they really enjoy it. the parents, their siblings, retired NFL um, has also partnered just trying to, uh, you know, redirect the kids, have them make better choices. Um, equine therapy, which is something else that's different, you know, with working with the horses. It's very good sometimes to see the youth interact with uh, horses. You know, they're really large animals and then you have to learn how to actually work with, with certain animals. So we try to expose them to what they normally would not receive in their homes as well as the parents and encouraging them, hey, do um, a lot more things together. Have a picnic, you know, when the last time you have a picnic, just various things to just try to motivate them uh, as we're working with them. That's wonderful. And I, I think what we were talking about exposure, that is so key in that redirection, in that restoration process that we were talking about restoring these, the youth's lives. Uh, thank you guys so much for this first section. We discussed sort of you all's uh, roles and responsibilities, how you all oversee three various units within the probation division, the school-based unit, the court-based unit, as well as other specialized units, how you all work closely together with um, other organizations in order to continue to expose these kids to new experiences from various church organizations, fraternities, sororities, having food banks, and even seeing the, the youth work with horses, as well as chess clubs, colleges, the list goes on. It's wonderful to hear how deeply involved the Cab County community is in assisting you all in helping these uh, juveniles and the youth. And also we discussed uh, the mission and the vision. And one of my, um, one of the most impactful parts to me of this vision, again, is not just assisting the child, but overall, providing and protecting the best interests of the community, the overall community. So what we're going to do is just take a quick break. We'll be right back and we're going to dive in a little bit deeper. <laughs> 